everyone in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation not a Diophantine equation we're not necessarily looking for integer solutions you can try to guess and check but we're going to be looking for all solutions real and complex I'm going to be showing some results from Wolfram Alpha which look pretty nice and then we're also going to be looking at a graph anyway so we have this expression or equation 3 to the power x equals 2 to the power x plus 2 to the power x plus 1 plus 2 to the power x plus 2. And we're going to be solving for x values. What's really interesting about this equation, or what's really nice about it, is that we have consecutive powers of 2 on the right-hand side, which is very nice. So we can go ahead and actually simplify the right-hand side. I mean, what would you do without simplifying, right? So let's go ahead and do it. Whenever you have an expression like this, 2 to the x plus 2 to the x plus 1, plus 2 to the x plus 2. Of course, this could also come in numerical form, such as you may have something like 2 to the 5 plus 2 to the 6, or let's just make it more fun. 2 to the power 50 plus 2 to the power 51 plus 2 to the power 52. Obviously, 2 to the power 50 would be very, very large, right? So, um, you can kind of estimate it by looking at 2 to the power 10 to the power 5. This is close to 1 million. I mean, what am I talking about? It's 1,000, sorry, 1,024, so which is about roughly 10 to the third power. And when you raise it to the fifth, it's going to be 10 to the power 15, which is actually 1 followed by 15 zeros. If you consider 9 uh, zeros to be billion, it's going to be trillion, quintillion, so on and so forth. Anyways, you get the idea. This is going to be a very large number. So for these kinds of expressions, for example, for this one, you would take out a 2 to the power 50, which is the lowest power. And then the, uh, the rest would follow. So for this one, we're going to be doing something similar. We're going to go ahead and take out the smallest power of 2, which is 2 to the power x. And of course, 2 to the power x plus 1 is the same as 2 to the power x times 2 to the 1, and this is 2 to the x times 2 to the second, right? So when we take 2 to the power x out, inside the parentheses, we're going to have 1 plus 2 to the first power plus 2 to the second power. Make sense? So we have a numerical sum inside the parentheses, 1 plus 2 plus 4, which is 7. In other words, this is equivalent to 7 times 2 to the power x, which is very nice because it's very simple, right? Now we can go ahead and set it equal to the left-hand side, which is 3 to the power x. Let's go ahead and do that next. 3 to the power x equals 7 times 2 to the power x. Great. Now, do you think 0 is going to be a solution? No, because 1 does not equal 7, obviously. But for these kinds of equations, you should always check 0 because any number to the power 0, with the exception of 0 base, is 1. Uh, so that might help sometimes. In this case, putting the powers together will help. I should say probably the expressions with the same exponent. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2 to the power x. And when we do, we're going to get something nice. Because when you have two expressions with the same exponent, you can go ahead and simplify them or combine them. Writing this with a common exponent, 3 halves to the power x equals 7. Great. Now this expression is going to be important. We're going to use it later on for um, something else. I'll tell you later. But for now, this is going to be very helpful because what we can do is log both sides. And you can use any base you want. You can use base 3 halves. Can we have a fractional base? Absolutely. You can have any base you want as long as your base is greater than 0 and different from 1. You can't use 1 as a base because that's kind of a comma. You can't use it, right? And base needs to be positive. It can't be 0 or negative because that would be very problematic. So, obviously we want some continuity, right? Whichever way base you want. But I like the natural log because it's a natural. I mean, it's so common, right? It's not even called common logarithm. It's kind of funny because common logarithm is base 10, I think. I think so, right? Log base 10 of x is log x, and this is called common logarithm. And if you have base e, then it's ln, which is a natural log, or Napier's log, whatever you want to call it. I call it natural log, backwards, and it's ln. 
So I'm going to use ln here. Let's ln both sides. And this is the real ln, okay? And when we do that, you don't have to put 7 in parentheses, but let's just do it for fun. Now we can go ahead and move the x to the front. And this gives us x times ln 3 halves equals ln 7. All right? How do you find x from here? Come on. This is basic algebra, right? You probably learned one-step equations in maybe, I don't know, 6th grade maybe, 7th grade. And then you can go ahead and divide both sides by ln 3 halves. That would give you ln 7 over ln 3 halves. And we're going to be looking at the numerical value of this expression in a little bit. But that's the answer. And guess what? There is only one answer. Why? Because these two curves, which were given at the beginning, only intersect once. And you'll see the graph uh, when I show you. But when I tried to graph it with Desmos, I had to really zoom out, and the graph looked really weird. That's why I used a different tool. Can you guess what it is? Anyways, so let's go ahead and look at the complex solutions. So we said that we're going to find all solutions, and I want to start here because that's a really good point to start. Let's go ahead and use that. 3 over 2 to the power x equals 7. And at this point, we align both sides and we're all good, but with the complex solutions, we have to do a little bit more. And what is that? We can go ahead and write this 3 halves as e to the power something, or we could just do natural log on both sides. But before we do that, we do need to complexify the 7. And that's a really nice expression that I've been using lately. But to complexify it, I'm going to multiply by 1, and then I'm going to write the 1 as a complex number. What do you mean 1 is a complex number? Isn't that a real number? Yes, but all real numbers are also complex numbers, and they can be expressed in standard form, in Euler's form, or does it call, is it called, what is it called? Polar form, yes, that's what it is. So 1 is represented by 0, 0.1,0. It's basically 1 unit away from 0, and it makes an angle of 0 degrees or radians with the real axis, right? Therefore, its argument is 0 or 2 pi or any multiple of 2 pi. In other words, we can write 1 as e to the power 2 pi n i, n being an integer, all right? Obviously, if you pick n equals 0, you're going to get 7. If you pick n equals 1, you're going to get e to the power 2 pi i, which, again, represents 1. There are infinitely many ways to represent 1 as a complex number, and this is kind of like a general form. But if you look at the principal value, you're going to replace n with 0, so on and so forth. Anyways, what do we do? We natural log both sides again. But this time, the right-hand side is more complex, right? So if you go ahead and ln both sides, you're going to have to consider two things here. First, we have a power, so we can move this power just like before, because on the left-hand side, we have the real ln. On the right-hand side, it's the complex logarithms. A lot of times people are going to write this as L-O-G for logarithm, but I usually use the ln notation. So this is a product, so I can write it as ln 7 plus ln e to the power 2 pi ni, which is the same thing as 2 pi ni. So in other words, this is ln 7 with a period of 2 pi i. Make sense? That's going to be our period. So we can keep adding it. Now, here's the fun part. We're going to divide both sides by ln 3 halves. And of course, this is going to give us the real part. And then the rest will be the imaginary part. An imaginary part is the coefficient of i. It doesn't include i, right? So we have our complex number, the solution, the very solution, as uh, a complex number in standard form. Okay, can you express this in polar form? Probably, but that would be a little painful. What you need to do is call this A, call this B, and write A plus B I. Depending on the value of A and B, you can go ahead and look at the tangent, determine the quadrant, find the theta using arc tangent or inverse tangent, and so on and so forth. That, that's going to be a lot of pain, but I'll leave it to you as an exercise. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some results from Wolfram Alpha and see what happens. Ta-da! Now, one of the things that I want to show you is this graph is not from Desmos, but because like I said earlier, this is nicely scaled. Look at the y-axis or the 
yes, the y-axis, right? I was going to say imaginary, but it's the y-axis. Desmos doesn't do it automatically. And plus, Wolfram Alpha does the graph automatically when you solve or an equation. Anyways, real solution as we talked about it before. And by the way, this is the value that we've been looking for, 4.799-ish. You're going to see it on the graph too. And then this is the general solution, which is the complex solution. Now, if you replace n with 0, guess what you're going to get? This is going to be 0. And now you're going to have i times i, which is i squared, which is negative 1. You're going to get negative log 7, which is, unfortunately, Wolfram Alpha writes the ln 7 as log 7. That's just a shortcoming, but anyways. And the bottom is going to be ln 2 thirds. Again, the same idea, but this is a negative, so you can negate it and come up with the exact same answer. Guess what? The real part is the real solution. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.